This is lecture six of psychopharmacology, psychology 6700. So today I'm going to talk about bipolar illness. Now, if you've ever worked with a bipolar patient, uh, it's a very compelling phenomena. Uh, the current theory is that it is largely biological, and if you've ever seen someone who's bipolar, it's fairly convincing that this is a brain disorder. Um, they speak very rapidly, racing thoughts, um, pressured, irritable, um, but certainly different from the normal realm of uh, behavior that you'd see in people from day to day. So in diagnosing bipolar illness, some of the things that you want to pay attention to First, of course, you want to rule out medical disorders because there are a number of treatable uh, medical syndromes that will cause bipolar disorder, or the, not bipolar disorder, but that will call, cause a manic episode. Things such as a stroke, hyperthyroidism, seizure activity, brain tumor, encephalitis, uh, diseases that affect certain parts of the brain can generate mania. Uh, legal and illicit drugs, uh, stimulants, antidepressants, thyroid hormones, steroids can all trigger manic episodes. It's important when diagnosing bipolar disorder to get a careful history. Generally, you don't see patients coming in with a manic disorder. Uh, unless you're working in a hospital and they're brought in um, by the police on a 5150 on an involuntary hospitalization. Uh, generally, when people come in voluntarily who have bipolar disorder, you'll see them coming in depressed. And uh, it's an easy mistake to make to diagnose them with major depressive disorder. Uh, so you want to get a careful history from them and from their family. You want to ask questions like, uh, have you ever had um, periods where you have spending sprees, uh, where you um, feel very up, where your thoughts are racing? And a lot of times the family will have a better picture of that uh, than the client will. Uh, one important question is, have you ever had uh, periods of a couple days where you haven't slept? Some of the other diagnostic um, decisions you want to make. Is it bipolar 1 versus bipolar 2 versus cyclothymia? And that's a matter of degree, how intense the manic episodes are. Uh, you want to determine whether or not there are psychotic features because that has treatment implications, whether uh, antipsychotic medications might be added to the treatment. And uh, whether it's rapid cycling, and uh, the DSM defines that as having at least four cycles in the past year. Uh, rapid cycling um, generally uses different types of medication. It tends to prefer um, uh, anti-seizure medications over uh, more traditional treatments such as lithium. Uh, the components of a manic episode, an elevated or irritable mood, and those sound a little contradictory, but if you've spoken to a manic patient, you understand that. A lot of times they'll be very cheerful, talking on and on, absolutely euphoric, but the moment you challenge them on something, that euphoria changes very quickly to irritability. Grandiose thoughts, um, they think they can do anything. A lot of times they'll talk about uh, wild schemes, starting a business, bicycling across the country, doing wild and grandiose things. Uh, decreased need for sleep. Now this is different from the insomnia that you might see with uh, someone who's depressed. They uh, really don't feel sleepy. It's, it's like they've had 20 cups of coffee and they'll just stay up uh, for a couple nights and feel no need to sleep. Very talkative, of course, a lot of times difficult to interrupt. Racing thoughts, distractible, increased activity, and risky behavior, which of course can be particularly dangerous. The treatment for um, mania or for bipolar disorder, uh, there's not much you can do in the way of psychotherapy when someone is actively manic. So first of all, they need to be stabilized on medication. Uh, lithium is uh, the traditional medication for bipolar. 
uh, has a number of drawbacks. Um, they have to be tested to make sure that their kidneys can tolerate it. After they're on it, the blood level needs to be carefully monitored uh, because the difference between an effective dose and a toxic dose is fairly close. So the um, blood level needs to be monitored as well as uh, side effects from lithium. Anticonvulsants are uh, actually probably at this point used more commonly than uh, lithium. Uh, Anti-seizure medications appear to be very effective for controlling the mood swings in lithium. And uh, atypical antipsychotics have also been used to uh, control mania. Psychotherapy, generally, uh, you think in terms of a rehabilitative model because a lot of times a person's life is a disaster when they've been suffering for years and years uh, with a bipolar disorder. They have difficulty holding jobs, their uh, relationships are in tatters, uh, so you want to stabilize their social patterns, help increase insight into what's going on. Uh, in, in some respects, it's like substance abuse treatment in reverse. Uh, they um, enjoy the highs, they enjoy the mania, and it's almost like using a drug. So you want them to stay on their medication uh, and you want to get them used to the idea that having a stable life is uh, a better way to live than having these wild swings.